better to take later on anyway. You get kind of more you benefit the, from it taking it at 16th okay. level than you do at 4th. Well, I mean, you get the same benefit when you're at level 16, but it feels yeah, good to get the giant better. chunk of hit points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mentally, it justifies itself yeah, better. Yeah. And so that, that that does come into play when I'm when I'm making these sorts of decisions. Yeah, in actual play, you will think about that. <laughs> Hello friends, Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Cameron, aka Prince Phantom. And today we're talking about his best picks for the, uh, not his picks for the best feats for the Paladin class. Yeah, Paladins are, uh, they're a lot of things. They're support, they're damage, they are, you know, they're, they're party face, they fill a lot of roles, and they do a lot of them really well. And they got some feats that can support those. Yes, we uh, we did monks before. This is going to feel a lot better. Yeah, we get to talk about a good class. Yeah. So, so the tra- traditional paladin play style, right, is melee. Uh, with you're generally speaking going uh, great weapon master, polearm master, um, with you know your choice of halberd or glaive, and with that you get. Three attacks per round. Uh, you can smite on all three of them if you really got to take something down. Uh, you get a lot of extra damage. It's cool. That's known, though. Let's, though, talk about a slightly different route. That's actually skipping Great Weapon Master. Whoa. Yeah. Now, uh, there's nothing wrong with the build I just mentioned. Let me be very clear. It's good. Cranks out damage. It's great. The Paladin, though, has a little bit of difficulty with Great Weapon Master. Because unlike some other classes, it doesn't really have good ways to boost its own accuracy. So it doesn't have a lot of great ways to counteract the minus five. Yeah. So that's a bit of an issue. Now, you can play around that. There's plenty of ways to play around that, especially if your table plays by flanking rules where advantage is super easy to get. It's not that big of an issue. But you can also just take Polar Master, and the Paladin is still a pretty good class in terms of damage dealing. So what it allows you to do, then, is hold the shield in your other hand. And now you have a much better AC, which allows you to fulfill kind of the tank fallacy that Paladin likes to advertise. So what Polar Master by itself gives you is um, you're probably going to be hold- wielding a spear, actually, instead of okay. a Glaive or Halberd, because then you have another arm free. And that drop in damage dice is fine. You're not losing out on much there by going from a Glaive uh, to a spear so you're still dealing good damage because you can still smite all three attacks if you really have to and you yeah. have better defense and you didn't have to take a feat it freed up a fleet feat selection for you so it's build dependent it's also dependent on what you want for your character i'm just here to tell you that both routes are valid and on the paladin specifically it's uh it's an actual choice that you have to make and, and there are pros and cons to both sides a third route to consider, I noticed you put as an afterthought on the written article here, is a uh, range paladin. Yeah, let's talk about that real quick. Okay. Paladins can't smite at range. Let's be very clear about that. Okay. Uh, paladins also need to stop smiting quite so much. <laughs> uh, let's let's get into some controversial topics here, shall oh. we? Smite's overrated uh, heavily. It is good. I will not deny that. It is a good feature. But it is not what you should be dumping every single one of your spell slots into. The Paladin has a good spell list, especially at low levels. They get good spells like Bless. Um, they have uses for their actual spells. Yes. Additionally, the Paladin actually really likes to be in the back line where most of the other characters are. Because they have auras. Well, I mean, I guess that that's party dependent. I don't know if that most of the other characters are in the back line. Otherwise, there's no front line. It is party dependent, but also you don't need a front line. Uh, there's this great thing that you can do called walking backwards. Yeah. And the the whole front line tank thing, it's all a fallacy in Dungeons & Dragons. There is no front line, okay? There is no feature that says that enemies have to attack you and they can't go and attack your wizard friend. 
there is no aggro feature in this game like in you know our rpgs well that i mean makes... there kind of is if you're playing with you know uh with, which is the one that uh it's not Polar Master. It's Sentinel, the, the the one that stops them dead in their tracks? Like Sentinel can help, and we'll talk about that, because Sentinel okay. is another thing that you're going to do if you... Let's, let's go ahead and talk about Sentinel real quick. Because Sentinel is something you're going to do if you're going into the melee range, right? Right. So, with Sentinel, it gives you a chance to stop one person. Now, yeah. It is a chance. You have to hit. Yeah. So, we're, it's not guaranteed. And it's only one person. That's really not holding a line. You no, know, it's doing your part. It's doing your part, but the point that I'm trying to get, get across here is many enemies have ways to circumvent having to walk past you. Additionally, yeah. if the hallway is just a little bit wider, they can just stay out of your range. <laughs> uh, teleportation exists. Flight exists. Paladins really struggle with flying. Like real enemies that they can't reach in general. Oh right. So yeah. the benefits. So the benefit there to playing a ranged paladin is that you get to keep the most important yeah. people of your party in your auras. Now, if you do have a party that's entirely melee, sure, it doesn't really. It's not really helping, right? But that's not most parties. I don't know that that's not helping. I mean. Well, no. All right. If I was thinking about the auras, not necessarily the ranged. Um, yeah, that doesn't help. Ooh, I'd feel bad if the whole party was melee and I was the 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 paladin, the uh, the yeah. You probably want to play courage a different... that uh, that's yeah, hanging just... back. Yeah, maybe a different class in that case. If you see your whole party <laughs> making melee characters, but what I'm saying is, if you have like a wizard and a druid and a cleric in your party or even a bard or artificer or anything like that, or a ranger, sticking back at range with them is a really good strategy because you have more protection, which gives them a massive bump to all of their saving throws, and your subclass is also giving you an aura that can benefit them as well. Uh, there are some subclasses that have um, auras that can harm enemies. So I think like uh, the aura of Conquest, uh, the Conquest Paladin has an aura that has detrimental effects to enemies that are frightened of it while they're right. within the aura. So, you know, maybe for that subclass, it's not really something you're interested in. But, you know, something like a Devotion Paladin, which gives all their allies uh, charm and fear immunity when they're within the aura, really wants people to stay inside their aura. So, it's not the only way you can play a Paladin as ranged, but it is, honestly, in, if we're talking strictly optimization here, arguably the best. Uh, and people don't like to hear that, and people aren't going to like to hear that in this video. But let me also back up my point with also explaining why Smite isn't as good as you think it is. So Smite adds 2d8 damage at base. That yeah. is an average of uh, 8.5. No, 9. Because it's 4.5 is the average of a d8. It's an average of 9 damage. Um, that is... When is that extra 9 damage useful? It's when you really need that extra little bit to kill your enemy, right? Well, I mean, because you're it, it depends denies on an how action. many you're you're piling on. Yeah, and if you want to pile on a bunch of smites, you can pump out a lot of damage, right? That's why I yeah. say so. There's a couple of instances where smite is really useful. If you've got one big enemy that's got like 200 hit points, mm -hmm. dumping a whole bunch of smites into it to just get its HP bar down as fast as possible is good. That's yeah. really useful. Um, another instance where smite can be really useful is when you crit, because sure, you get yeah. to choose to smite after you know if you've crit. And in that instance, that can be really good. But also, make sure that you're not smiting in a sense where you're overkilling. Yeah. Now, that's an instance where you crit, and the enemy has 10 HP left, and you say, oh, sweet, I crit, let me smite. You were already going to deal 10 damage to them anyway. You've wasted your spell slots. So what I'm not saying this might is bad. I'm saying be more picky. That's all. But um, going back to what you were saying about being a ranged paladin, uh, one other thing about not using smites is that you don't waste the feature because you then get to use spells. Yeah. And you get to make better use of a lot of your spells too. Yeah. 
Paladins also kind of suck at concentration. Um, they're heavily dependent on both their strength and their charisma. So that leaves your constitution as probably your third most important stat. So you're probably not getting it above a 14. That's a plus two. Mm. So by being at ranged, you can concentrate on spells like Bless and be much better at concentrating on them. So that's that's the argument for going either way. It's your character, also, your choice. Do what you want. That also feels like a segue into your next feat selection. <laughs> well, yeah, that's uh, that's Warcaster. Um, yeah. I mean, paladins just suck at co holding concentration, and they have good concentration spells. Bless, as I've already said many times, is very good. Um, Shield of Faith might be something that you're interested in, especially if you're trying to tank, and you have a good opportunity to do it. Mm -hmm. you're, you know, If you're standing in a doorway, and the enemies are on one side of the door, and your friends are on the other, casting Shield of Faith and dodging makes you really, really hard to hit. So, that's a genuine option. Um, and uh, even there's I mean, even a couple other paladin spells that are good with uh, concentration. Wrathful Smite, which I have tried to convince Sam of many times, that is actually the one good smite spell. Um, he hasn't seemed to read that comment yet, but I will keep trying. <laughs> it's the one good one because it, they have to use an action to stop the effect, and it's it's and, and it's frightened, and it's a check, which means they don't get to add the proficiency bonus to the check. So they have a really low chance of actually succeeding that check. Um, anyway, it's it's really good if you actually slow down and read it for a second. Anyway. <laughs> um, there's a bunch of stuff you can do with having better concentration. Your aura of protection, by the way, does apply to ourselves and does boost our own concentra uh, constitution saving throws, which is great because that means you don't need to take resilient constitution. Oh, that is nice. Your, your constitution is already being buffed by Warcaster and your aura of uh, protection, so you really don't need that extra boost. You can kind of skip Resilient. I never thought I'd hear you say that. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this is the first time for everything. Yeah. Listen, when the, class, when the class does it by itself, that's great. You know, you don't have to do anything else to it. Um, past that, there's a couple spells that you can take for increasing your magic capabilities. Fey Touched uh, immediately comes to mind. Um, paladins don't get access to short-range teleportation magic, uh, except for a couple of subclasses, so getting Misty Step is really good, and will help you get into melee, which is something that paladins really struggle with. Your enemies on the other side of a river shooting a bow at you, teleport to them. Now, you're good. Um, Silvery Barbs also gives Paladin a really easy, non-concentration use for their first level spell slots that will benefit the rest of their party. Um, helps your wizard land their spells. It's great. And yeah, gives you a lot more support to a class. I don't think there's a class that wouldn't benefit from Fey Touched, yeah. Yeah, and half casters really love it because they have the first level slots sitting around, and they can a lot of like the paladin. They've got bless. They've got a couple of other good spells. You get to a certain level, you may not be super interested in casting those spells anymore. Mm. So, Fey Touched gives you an outlet for those first level spell slots that might otherwise go unused. That's good. Um, past that, Inspiring Leader is really good for a Paladin. If your party doesn't have another source of party-wide temporary HP, um, Paladins have the charisma to take Inspiring Leader and to use it properly, uh, and it gives your entire party a ton of HP, just as a blanket. And it's leaning further into the support playstyle of a Paladin. And into the uh, thematics. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it kind of feels like it was... It reads like it was made for a paladin, right? right? This is, you know, at the end of Braveheart, you know, riding down the line, inspiring mm -hmm. the troops. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a really easy fit. I highly recommend taking it. Probably once you get to around level 8, level 12, it's a really good pickup. Um, magic Initiate. Um, you can always pick up a, a familiar, and that'll be great. Um, paladins with a familiar get a lot more stuff to do out of combat. And that helps them a lot. You can also pick up something like Booming Blade. Uh, if you took Magic Initiate, you can now combine that with Booming Blade for your reaction attacks, do extra damage on your reaction attacks, and keep the enemy from moving unless they want to take more damage. Good time. So, yeah, it's a neat little combo. If you took Warcaster earlier, you're benefited by taking Booming Blade later. Um, after that, generically good stuff. Lucky, tough. The same <laughs> as I say for every character. 
generically good feats or generically good. If you want to take them, if you're level 16, level 19, you don't know what to do with your feat selection, go ahead. They will not disappoint right, you. you know, lucky, yeah. That's across the board good. Tough, I feel not everybody needs tough. Not, not, ever, not everybody is going to get the same amount of benefit from tough. So the paladin might, especially if you're playing. Uh, that, that's what I'm saying. So this could be you know, not just gener generically good, but perhaps paladin. Yeah, specific. and it is it is still generically good. It's not that much better for paladin. Right. The reason paladin might want it as opposed to other classes is because paladins actually kind of, despite what you would think and despite how they're portrayed, despite how all their art looks, suck at defense. <laughs> It's not really a low tier play, but when you get to high tier play, because their armor class doesn't scale in any way. They don't have ways really at all besides like Shield of Faith uh, to get an armor class of over 20. And huh. that sounds really good, right? And it is really good at low levels. Yeah. Until you start fighting stuff with a plus 14 to hit, it's not that good anymore. So I feel like the whole game's topsy turvy as you get in higher levels because really. I mean, the wizard is the the hardest character. The wizard is the most defensive, yeah. yes. Yeah. And all the martial characters are squishy. Yes. Um, so in that instance, you know, tough could actually be that buffer to your hit points that you need. And tough also feels better to take later on anyway. You get kind of more you benefit from it taking it at 16th big... level than you do at 4th. Well, I mean, you get the same benefit when you're at level 16, but it feels yeah, good to get the it feels giant better. chunk of hit points. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, mentally it justifies itself yeah, better. Yeah. And so that 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 does come into play when I'm when I'm making these sorts of decisions. Yeah, in actual play, you will think about that. Yeah. So that's why tough might be more useful on a paladin. It's just because at high level play, their defense, their their actual AC, their saving throws are really good because yeah. they have aura of protection. Their saving throws are great, probably one of the best in the game. But their you know their their actual AC is. Like cluster at that point. Uh, well, we mentioned uh, magic initiate. Uh, did you not mention shield then? Well, then we run into the issue again of only being able to cast shield once. Nah, um, yeah, yeah. It's it, and like I, I always say, if you only have one combat encounter per day, fine. You know, take shield. That I will. That will help you with your AC, especially when you get entire level play. Um, but. Generally speaking, if you really want shield, uh, a first level dip into sorcerer will fix that right up. Or uh, uh, even uh, a lot of people, a lot of uh, paladins already take one level of hexblade, and hexblade can give up, you yeah. shield. Yeah, hexblade can give you shield through its expanded list. That's actually why shield is a good spell on the hexblade's expanded list. It's not for hexblades; it's for everybody multiclassing into hexblade. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, since you mentioned it here, why why is hexblade a, a one level dip? Um, such a good thing for a paladin. Well, it allows them to attack with a charisma modifier instead of their strength, so they can That's kind good. of dump strength a little bit. You still, though, have to have a 13 strength to multi-class in and out of paladin. Okay. So you can't dump your strength entirely, but having a 13 strength is a lot. It's actually very easy to accomplish. Yeah, I mean, when you're, by... when you're not trying to push it up to 18, that yeah. gives you uh, some wiggle room. Yeah, so that is a big benefit, and um, it, like, it gives you shield, and it gives you... Um, Hexblade's Curse, which is still kind of useful, sort of, sometimes. Um, but, I mean, really, honestly, being able to attack with your Charisma and the Shield spell is enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's enough for me to justify yeah, the one-level dip. That's great, yeah. Uh, Doll out your strength <laughs> for 13. Uh, it's a better benefit than most of these feats are given, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so, consider that. That's great. There's a lot of ways you can go with this, then. Yeah, yeah. All right. Do you have anything else to add before we go? Nah, play your paladin how you want. Play it ranged, play it melee, just know that both are viable. And you're going to have a hell of a lot more fun than you are with a monk. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That was the best feature for paladins. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think down in the comments below. And like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.